Quan Al X did hand out copies of this independent autopsy report to the reporters. And to be clear, nowhere in this report does it say homicide. I'm, I was going to hit Raven. Right. I'm ready. I'm ready for my career in the NFL. I just got to change my speed, muscle bass, and, and, and stature. <laughs> the terror suspect Omar Faraj Saeed Al Hardan faced a federal judge today here in downtown Houston, and he's now in jail waiting until his detention hearing next Wednesday. Here's what we know so far about him. He's 24 years old. We found out today that he's married. And the floors have been reopened again with HPD keeping a close eye on things. All those cars are stranded. Once in a while, you have a couple cars trying to make it through the water and they just speed on through, but it is just a standstill for several parts of Tomball Parkway. And of course, the rain slowed down a little bit, but the lightning still spreading across the sky like a cobweb. Now with me is a stranded driver here. We happened upon him while we were stopped here. Jonathan, even at this hour, construction workers are rebuilding the bridge and they say they plan to work late into the night. Now police are treating this as a homicide because they say part of that truck was suspended when it should have been down. According to Mian Shang, your lips show how much of a giver and how much of a taker you are. Okay, here are my crude egghead models to use as examples. Now, if your upper and lower lip are about the same width, it means that you're balanced. You give as much as you take. Jonathan Melinda, for the last decade, this man sold M&Ms to attorneys, bailiffs, defendants, anyone who went to the Harris County Courthouse on a regular basis. He chatted with them, sang to them, and became a part of their lives until one day he stopped showing up. Several months ago, on their walk to the Harris County Courthouse, attorneys noticed an unsettling silence. Rick became a part of our lives, and one day he just wasn't there. A voice was missing, the scene wrong without its bright yellow. Rick Johnson, the man who for more than 10 years sold peanut M&Ms and gum and anything else lawyers needed outside the courthouse, was missing. Somebody hired their private investigator to go find him. And we, they tracked him down. The search led them here to Rick's small apartment in Midtown. He's lost weight. He's 120 pounds now, and he cannot move on his own. It turns out Rick had been diagnosed with stage four colon cancer and leukemia. I lost weight, came, don't want to eat. But his joy comes back in waves. He loves the friends he's made at the courthouse. Our legal analyst, Chris Tritico, has known him for a decade, and Rick lit up when he visited. I love you. I love you, too. Yeah. Don't worry. Be happy. Chris Tritico got you back. That's right, baby. That's what he was known for, singing until you couldn't help but crack a smile. I'm a Texas Aggie, and so he would always say, Gig -a -Maggies! At the moment he saw me coming, and he would say it until I acknowledged him and smiled, and um, he understood that I, I, he made my day. His presence and now absence so strong that attorneys now come to him simply to show he is loved. He's just this happy guy who wants to be a part of society. He doesn't have much. He just wants to be a part of what everybody else is doing. Now what everybody else is doing is helping Rick when he needs it most. No, he wants to send me somewhere. I gotta go work, guys. Attorneys have pitched in for his medical care, and there is a GoFundMe page for him, which you can find on my Facebook page. Rick's caregiver did say he is now in hospice care, but they're keeping hope that he might regain enough strength to go through chemotherapy. In the meantime, Rick wanted me to tell anyone watching that he loves receiving cards, and if you'd like to write him one, send it to our station, and we'll make sure it gets delivered to Rick. In the newsroom, Angela Chen, Fox 26 News. Wow. Jonathan, the teacher, says his tweets against Islam originally grew from a Twitter war he was having with a Muslim-American attorney. Many say the words were ugly and the pictures he posted with them even uglier. But not all parents we spoke with were against him. It was a surprise to parents on the first day back from spring break. He um, was helping my son, you know, join football and stuff like that, and he seemed nice. Um, never thought that he would be anything against Islam. The teacher in question, James Bretney, a ninth grade vocational instructor at Sterling Aviation High School. HISC officials say they're now investigating after Bretney tweeted anti-Muslim messages saying, I hate Islam and embrace Islam and you embrace death, alongside graphic pictures of dead children, which we are choosing not to show. We spoke with Brittany over spring break. Islam is it's bad for people. It deforms people's human spirit. But he also said it doesn't affect his ability to teach. 
I respect my students, I love my students. My students are the reason why I'm in that classroom. But this isn't about that. This is about one man expressing his opinion. Now parents and caregivers are weighing in and for the most part saying it's not appropriate. For someone to put stuff out like that, I, me as a parent, I don't think I would want my kid in that classroom or around such hatefulness. I don't think it's okay, but you should definitely keep those kind of comments to yourself, especially if they're, you know, they're students or teachers that's going to see the post on Twitter. And it's not like it was private. But we did find one parent who says she believes Brittany can say whatever he wants on his own time because from what she's seen, Brittany has been a good teacher to her son. He's an excellent teacher, a wonderful teacher. I've had the pleasure of meeting him over and over and over. He teaches my son and he's excellent with these children. He's not teaching these children to be racist. And we first reported on this HISD teacher last week when HISD officials told us it was under investigation. We checked in with the school district again today and they told us the matter is still being investigated. In the meantime, the Council on American Islamic Relations has called for a meeting with HISD to discuss the issue. They whip, they flip, and they lift. Okay, so I want this one on the middle mannequin. But at work... For the work authorization on the encroachment. You would never suspect... There's the patient coming to OR22. And this one on the, the corner. If you could knock that out for me, that'd be great. These are everyday women with normal jobs. But underneath these clothes, spectacularly sculpted bodies. And they are a part of a growing group who are embracing muscle and redefining what's sexy in 2016. People want to see strong legs, they want to see strong arms, and they don't want to be, see the skinny fat girls. I've always found muscle attractive. Lakin works at an oil and gas company. Amy got this to me earlier. And when she's not working on projects, she's working on her body. She can push press 135 pounds, and unlike many women, she's trying to gain weight and muscle mass. But she's not a bodybuilder. For her, becoming fit is about becoming confident. Working out gives women a sense of confidence that's undeniable. And I think that over time, that's what's become the acceptable image for women because it gives you that confidence to go anywhere and do anything. Do anything. Like save lives. Kayla is a resident anesthesiologist at Memorial Hermann Hospital. After spending hours in the OR, she spends hours at the gym, and though her baggy scrubs hide it, her body is defined through years of work. This doesn't happen overnight. It's years and years of being in the gym and really being dedicated to what you're eating and what you're, what you're working out. Um, so I think that shows a certain personality in someone. And maybe that's why more people are finding muscle on women attractive. It tells you what kind of person they are. Now I feel like the sculpting is just a sure sign of dedication and commitment. But why this shift? When did female beauty standards start moving away from skinny towards sculpted? It seems the progression of women has corresponded with what we idealize. Oh, the hand may be quite continental. In the 50s, we worshipped the curvy Marilyn Monroe, the ultimate sex icon. In the 90s, stick-thin models. In the 2000s, women are all about empowerment and strength in career and in body. I think it's just become our new standard that beauty is strong. It doesn't necessarily have to be skinny. I'm Superwoman, three boys. At the store, people are, are always asking me, what do you do to stay skinny? I'm like, I'm not skinny, never say I'm skinny, I'm strong, I'm fit. And this is after three C-sections in the last four years. Ready? Yeah. Her hope is that her kids grow up seeing the beauty of strong women. I mean, my kids see me, you know, doing Olympic lifting next to my husband. So I, I hope it attracts them to strong women like me. When I go to the grocery store with my Two big bags of dog food, like, you know, I know I can lift it up and I don't need it, someone to help me. The beauty standard shift is also apparent online, like in this hard body subreddit with more than 100,000 readers. But yeah. for me, I like a strong, sexy, fit woman, like six pack. <laughs> I don't really know, actually. Thighs, big butt, that's what I like. <laughs> but I think having a you know, very strong woman athletic build, I find it attractive. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, we're in an era where society is finally smiling at women who can look how they feel. That is a in Houston, Angela Chen. Cardio workout. Fox 26 News.